So I'm going to ask you just a couple questions before we start. This is your 15th season you're coming up on. 15. Do you know how many assistants and coordinators, do you keep track of that, how many guys you've had since you've been in Baltimore? Uh, no, I used to, but I don't anymore. Do you, do you know how many of them have gone on to become head coaches? <sighs> six, five, six, somewhere in their ballpark. Here in the end coach, right. We always talk about coaching trees and how you uh, head coaches trace their genealogy back to a head coach. Well, this one, in, in doing some research, we can trace your careers back to one player, and that's Ray Lewis. Up next, Baltimore's head coach, five former Ravens assistants who became head coaches elsewhere, and the middle linebacker who connects them all. It's a Ray Lewis roundtable today on NFL Films Presents. I'm a machine, jerk. These people cannot score on us. Dominate those three. One, two, three. Dominate. One of the things that's interesting to a fan with Reyes is the pregame introduction. And as a coach, what do you think of that? Is it, is, it's like when you see it, is he's, it's all about me. I'm drawing attention to myself. I was there when they started that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't learn how to get lined up, but we had choreographed a dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost melted down on the sideline because it started with more than Ray, but he was the final act. John, what did you think then? when well, you took over and you saw that? Yeah, I probably thought the same thing that everybody else thought out there because I was looking at it from the outside in and didn't know Ray, you know, and, and, and you, would, you would maybe assume it is about it's a selfish thing. And Rex and I had this conversation, yeah. and my first thought was, you know, we're not going to do this. So when he came to him, I said, all right, I said, we can stop it. And then I was like, I think you should just ask a couple of players here and there and see what they say. And they was like, man, you can't stop that. You know what I'm saying? That's like a part of us. You get in that stadium and, and Ray does that dance, the place just explodes. And that's what Ray's all about. It's not about him. You know, whether you come out as a team or whether you do it the way the Ravens do and it's kind of built around Ray Lewis, it's where your heart's coming from. And Ray's heart is all about the, the crowd and the players and his team. The greatest thing about it now is I tell our rookie players, you got to get up there and watch this. Okay. <laughs> We're playing. And so they're all like, great, coach, you're right. <laughs> the most amazing thing to me, is, and it's the reason I didn't want to go to Baltimore. You know, I'm, I'm saying, no, Lord, why am I going to Baltimore? Because I'm thinking from everything that I saw, the minute I get there, I got this guy that's already been defensive player of the year. Best defensive player of the game. And... And I get there and I try to tell him something. It's going to be, well, wait a minute, coach, I already know how to do that. So I'm thinking, let me go somewhere else where there's some rookies or something. 1985, I was 10 years old. That was my first year ever playing football. I would run home to make sure I did not miss a Chicago Bears game. And all I remember was Mike Singer did. I like this kind of party. I like this kind of party, baby. And then I'm sitting there, and they tell me, Coach Singletary is going to come coach you. I go there, and he is waiting in the locker room, shaking. Coach, coach, I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. And he was like, he, he was looking at me like, wow, this kid. He was like, for real? I was like, Coach, I'm serious. Like, I want it all. All the stuff that you want to teach me, all the stuff that you're going to teach me about being a man, all the stuff you're going to teach me about being a player, I can't wait. It's okay. Well, we're going to go to work. You know, people have a vision of Ray as being like a, a, a get in front, yeller and screamer type guy. He's a non-confrontational guy. I mean, he loves people. You know, he embraces people. That's what makes him kind of interesting and different than what people think. The other thing I would say, and it's coming piggyback on what John said, is Ray got drafted, he bought a condo or townhouse for him, he bought one for his, his mom. And so the guys would come over to Ray's house. Well, one of the neighbors called the police because these had to be gang guys. 
I mean, these had to be little gangbangers with these <laughs> SUVs and, and all these guys, and, and, you know, and they had to be what's going on. So, you know, <laughs> please come knocking. Oh, hey, Mr. Lewis, you know, it's Ray. <laughs> and they got the Bibles out. On. They have the Bibles out. And, you know, you got half the team in there, and he's leading Bible study. And in him, the perception is not necessarily reality, but those of us that have been, you know, are behind the scenes with him all the time, we know you know, what he is as a man and as a person. You know, whether you come the Ravens family has surrounded Ray Lewis since he arrived in the NFL. And never was their support of him stronger than in the response to an off-field episode in 2000, in which Lewis pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge of obstructing justice in connection with a double homicide outside an Atlanta nightclub. And I said, guys, this man has never been in a fight. And I said, that's just not him. Not even close. And the entire organization, right. everybody believed in Ray Lewis. And nobody wavered. Yep. And that was the Not thing because close. I think any of us that had been around him like we had at that point for four seasons, yeah. I had four years, you had no question. Did that affect the, the way you were coaching him, Jack, to no. know that this was hanging no. over his head? And I think, you know, to his credit, I mean, he, he took a very difficult situation and then looked for ways to make it positive as positive as he could and grow and, and he looked for opportunities as a man when ray came back from atlanta after being you know he was he spent two weeks in jail and when he came back he said to me he talked about you know i've been reduced as low as any man could ever be reduced but now i've had a lot of time to pray about this i i i know i know the things i gotta remove i know the things that i can't i can't do no more i know the things i know the people i can't even hang around no more but I got it, I got it. And every day I came to work, as soon as I got back, I found out who friends was. I found out what loyalty meant. I found out how I had some great people in my corner. Before the game, I used to love to watch the running backs come out. Because <laughs> Ray, Ray, you know, Ray would be out there and he'd be warming up and he'd be getting on the ladder. And he'd be roaming the field like a lion. And the backs would come out, and they would, the minute they left the tunnel, they'd be looking for me. <laughs> you think at the, at the level of National Football like you can't intimidate players, but oh. you're telling me that you can. <laughs> Ray can. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> you would be amazed how many guys came down with the flu, the running backs. Hamstring got a little tight. <laughs> <up the week. laughs> so they came yeah. down with a bunch of things, but we call it the Ray Lewis flu, and a bunch of them catch it. If you wanted to go around the room and pick one play that you remember that epitomizes what Ray Lewis is about. The 100 plays? Or just, <laughs> just one. <laughs> right. Wait, 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 wait. The one I think of is the Richard Mendenhall play. Ray hit him right in the hole. He didn't play the rest of the year, I don't think. He broke his shoulder. It was a tight game. He hits Kellen Winslow, the ball pops up, and we intercept it. it. Just shows like the middle was raised. How about the block that he uh, laid when Chris McAllister ran the, uh, oh, right the, field, goal, field, goal. the, the field goal? Eddie George, mm -hmm. remember, to the sideline. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. To me, that's the epitome of what you want as a middle linebacker. Boy, I tell you what, I don't know if it gets any better than the play he did this year uh, with the game on the line, that fourth it's down play, hard. Fourth and two with the 15. Rolls the deep back, gets the hand off oh. the backfield. Ray Lewis comes up the middle. And he that's not the defense. That's not the call. And yet he's running through the A-gap and hitting Sproles in the backfield four yards deep because he's got four or five tips. He knows what play's coming. They keep him the back end, which means, which means we can keep a, a back end. You see what I'm saying? When he starts talking about little tips and little things like that, if you don't know, you're kind of like, yeah, Ray, you're right. And you're like, man, is that right? <laughs> look, look at that. No, I don't remember that. Is there anyone you can remember, Jack? 
The one thing I remember is Ray actually had a perfect game. First playoff game we had the year we won the Super Bowl. Throws underneath, it's intercepted. Ray Lewis intercepts. We graded false steps, the production, and the technique. He found the football, and he was pretty physical, so. And I actually went back, sorry, Ray, because he's going to hear this now, but I actually went back because I got done, and I had 100%. I said, no, nobody's perfect. <laughs> I, went, I went back over the film, and I found him, I found him false stepping. I said, ah, there you go. Got a minus right there. You're not perfect now. You know what I mean? Because it was, it, was, it was a perfect game. It's because the real being the person he is, that's kind of how he always critiqued me, that technical stuff. I'm saying if you know he's going on the pump, then hold it. Don't get to the line until he pumps. All right. Okay? Gotcha. Always. And, and each, every one of those guys, they always critique me with that little, little stuff. And that's why each one of those guys, you know, I grab something from them and I hold on to it to this day. 55, Ray in the middle, okay? Ray in the middle. He used to, Marv used to get so mad at me because I used to just think too much instead of just reacting and reacting is understanding what every person on the field does. Any questions there? Okay, under inside fire zone. Man. Then reacting is a very simple thing to do. Coach Singletary, for me, it became more of a father figure, you know, because me and him really started having like real personal conversations. You know, we would meet like once a week, go over our Bible. But on the field, he taught me to be careful with my passion that can be displayed as rage towards my teammates, towards my coaches at times. Don't come down, don't send a message down here that don't sound positive. Uh -huh. When we give you a call out there, Ray, you gotta look and say, that's gonna work. Right. How much? Okay. How much? Hey, hey. Then I had like Mike Smith. 330. He made me really relax. Said hit. And that's why I tell guys, don't take it so serious. I once did that. And then coach was just like, play the game. You know, have fun doing it. Hey, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. There's other guys out here as yeah. well. And then Rex, because we have been together so many years, he was like that final piece that brought it all together. Okay, you know what I mean? Now I realize, and I try to explain it to guys, that's the thing that I think that made me grow, you know, really so fast, you know, that I realized that it was never these big, big plays that people see on Sports Center. It's those small things that defines greatness. <laughs> nice job. Play your heart out, as usual. Different set of rules for, for Ray at, mm -hmm. at, at, at his level or not? No, no, Ray, Ray, you put the pressure on. Mm -hmm. See, Ray could take it. See, you, exactly. you, you coach Ray harder than anybody else exactly. because people look to him for that. Jam him and go. Sink him and go. Here we go. You don't know which way it's going, Ray. Right. Here. Yeah, I got there in 99 uh, coaching linebackers, and very first meeting we had with all the linebackers, Ray didn't come. Ray and Peter Bowyer. And so some of the guys were like, nah, they kind of do their own thing. You know, and I was like, nah, it can't be. can't be. And... Next time we got together, we, we talked about, you know, what it looked like to be, you know, the Larry Bird, the Magic Johnson of your team and, and that the responsibility you had. He sat me down. He was like, look, guys, they look up to you. If you're going to really impact a team and be a great player, you don't have a special set of rules. You, you do all the rules and then beyond. And that's a meeting, Thursday night meeting, the way you prepare, the way you get ready for a game, practice. He embraced it immediately. He's like, you're right, you're right. And he never missed anything else. I mean, he was in front, in charge, leading the group. And I said, I told you in 1997, 98, 98, you will never play for another team. Never. He said, no matter what happens around here. And I was like, wow. You know, he, he was like, so it's your football team. Yeah. Get there and go take care of it. And, and that's the thing that he understands and does. And uh, nobody does it better. For a coach, he, he's a coach enabler in a positive way because he enables you to reach the group. Because if you give Ray something, he embraces it and he charges so, so hard with it that the group gets inspired by it. If practice is a little bit of a law, I say, Ray, we're, we're a little bit. He goes in the huddle and, let's go! He is an out front guy. I mean, he can get up in front of the locker room. He can give a great pregame speech, better than anybody you've ever heard.
But that's not what he does every day. He doesn't say much. I mean, he leads by example. We had a comedian come into camp this year, and uh, he was cracking on everybody, and everybody's laughing and howling and falling on the floor. Then he got after Ray. He said something about Ray, and the whole room kind of went quiet. <laughs> we looked over at Ray. Can we laugh, Ray? So he's laughing. Oh, okay, we can all laugh. You know, it's, it's okay to laugh. Like the rookie show. Yeah, like the rookie show. Like Whoa. the rookie show. <laughs> The thing about Ray was the way you, he interacted with you. You know, I always was looking forward to Thursdays during the season because Ray would go home on Wednesday and he'd watch tape and he would come in and he'd have some little nugget that he would share with me. As a coach, it kind of opened up my eyes that you got to interact with these guys. You know, they can help you just as much as you can help them. When all of you are coaching, do you ever find yourself in a situation when you're referring back to Ray Lewis that, you know, when I coached Ray Lewis, this is what he did, or Ray Lewis did oh. this or, or that. I mean, <laughs> real, every day, uh, every day. Uh, <laughs> every day. <laughs> and it's funny, guys will ask you how Ray did things. Players on, players on your team still to this day. The thing that to me most, we weren't very good. <laughs> if you can remember that. 96, 97, 98. And he never said a coarse word about the rest of the football team or any of his teammates, either individually or collectively. And that's what I draw to our guys today and to my so-called leaders and good players in Cincinnati is don't you ever look at somebody else. You put this group on your back and you do like Ray did uh, because he never, all he wanted to do as how do we get better as a team? How do I make this team better? Hey, listen to me carefully, man. There's no time to come back to the huddle and take my ball. It ain't time for that. It's time to do what we do. Count on each other. We can't be on the ground. We can't both be on backside. Beat your man. Beat your man. Beat your man. Let's go. That's why he raises the level of the play around him, but he also raises the level of coaching. I told Ray, I said, I want you on the balls of your feet. <laughs> Stay on the balls of your feet. And, and I didn't do a good job of showing him what I meant exactly. So Ray is out there on his tiptoes in practice, and I'm looking at his face, and he's squinching up, you know, like, man. I said, Ray, what are you doing? He's a coach. coach I, I'm trying, but I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, all right, well, I'm going to show you. Just like sprinters run. The reason I you know? They whole foot don't ever touch. They're very fluid, you know, in their movements. Oh, that's what you mean. I mean, every little thing, you have to be on. <laughs> you have to know what you're talking about <laughs> because he's going to do it exactly the way you want it. Uh, once you coach a guy like that, uh, you never, ever forget it. And when you're talking to other players about it, it's really difficult to explain. If you start out in, in Baltimore as a coach, um, it, it kind of messes you up for anywhere else you go. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Because you're thinking, well, you know, I wonder what, who's that guy for the next team? I've got a guy in, in San Francisco right now, the middle linebacker, and I, I think one day he's going to be very special. But people say, well, you know, how much better can he get? And sometimes it's unfair to him because I know Ray. And I say, you know, this guy is scratching the surface. And people are like, got to be kidding me. But they have no idea who I'm measuring him against. His passion for the game and his passion to be great, it's here. And, and everybody else is playing at another level. It's here. And that's why if you're playing the Baltimore Ravens, you know it's a, a double chin strap game because that team's going to be ready to roll. Buckle up, both chin straps. Anybody over there touch the ball? Let's find out. Let's find out how tough they really are today. And it comes from you know, obviously the leadership now, but Ray Lewis. That's what it starts with in Baltimore. That's why they've always been successful on defense in particular, but as a football organization. Nobody wanted to disappoint Ray Lewis, myself included. 
He is the Baltimore Ravens. We were all part of it. But he is a Baltimore Ravens. And I think there's very few players that have had that kind of impact on an, on an organization. <sighs> like, I never heard, I didn't hear one man on here speak about the number of wins and losses. I was how the Marvin said we was terrible in 1996-97. It was all about what I was willing to accept from them. Sometimes people teach you something, you say to yourself, did I really learn from them? I learned from them. I learned from every one of those guys. And now I'm just learning from Coach Harbaugh now. And I've never been so happy if for Marvin, for Jack, for Mike, for Rex, for Coach, you know, for all these guys to one day say, man, they did it, you know? Because that's the ultimate for them, you know, is to go be a head coach of your own and, you know, they're doing it. I just don't know if there's a greater reward, man, sitting there listening to this, man. I'm not going to get emotional right now because it's a very freaking hard thing not to. All right? Ah, but... This is good. This is great. Awesome. Because now I got something else that just fueled me. Yeah. I don't want to stop now. <laughs>